Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or find a way to lose. I'm telling you right now, I'm picking Harrison to uh, outbox, frustrate. Um, don't know if he'll stop him, but he'll make Tim Zhu look like what Tim Zhu is, which is an ordinary fighter who has a puncher's chance, but it won't work against Tony Harrison. Look, two days after Harrison, um, you know, when he, he basically got a gift decision, right? But at the end of the day, he's the first man to beat Jamel Charlo, who I think a lot of people see him as a superstar, man. And uh, Charlo had to give up that WBC belt. Now, it, it's not because he didn't want to. It's because, you know, I think Jamel lost his right to complain in that fight. And I just feel that someone deserved a little bit more than him, and that was uh, Tony Harrison. But especially when you think about Tony Harrison, you think about a lot of these fighters when they have their trainers, right? But you think about Tony Harrison, and not many people talk about the fact that his dad trained him, okay? Now, him and his dad were very, very close. His dad trained him from a young boy in boxing and taught him all the life's lessons. And all those things are going to show up when he gets to fight uh, Tim Zhu. My understanding is Tony Harrison has now tattooed his father a uh, uh, face onto his chest. So he will also have his father's name on his trunks. Now, you know, his dad's name was Ali. So he's going to be in there uh, uh, kind of uh, promoting long live Ali. He think he's going to have uh, the LLA on his trunks as well. But his dad's name was Ali Salam. Now, his dad didn't only glove up Tony uh, Tony Harrison, he also made him into a world champion. And there's not a lot of trainers, especially father-son trainers, that are able to get that done. Tony Harrison also has a brother named LJ, and the father coached both of them. Um, again, he gave those guys a lot of lessons about just the, how to use their hands, how to throw the right hand, how to use their feet, how to be confident, you know, just loyalty. And something you hear Tony talk about a lot is respect and honor, and he's pretty passionate about that. He uses pretty colorful language when he starts talking about those things that are extremely important to him and are the things his dad instilled in him. But we know when you're talking about believing in young men, you know, they say when belief was the very thing a, a young man craves, when they get someone to believe in them, that becomes a memory, and they never forget. And that's why when you talk about Tony and his dad, him going into that ring with Zoo, you know, he's taking that with him. So now we're talking about, I believe the date they're fighting is March 12th, right? It's going to be a very exciting showdown between him and Tim Zoo, who's fighting out of Australia. You know, it, it gives him an, opportun an opportunity to fight for another title. You know, it just so happens to be the WBO. We know that... <clears throat> We know these, they have these different titles, so, you know, it is what it is. You got two guys having the WBO, WBO titles, one interim, one international, one is the super. You know, it's all crazy out here with these sanctioning bodies and these titles. Too many damn titles, right? Too many champions. But at the end of the day, Tony Harrison is salivating over the opportunity to go out there to that continent of Australia, him in his super bad fashion, and be able to give a tribute to his pops and win a title and bring it back, which is going to put him back in position to fight Jamel Charlo, uh, Harrison Charlo III. Now, let's understand something here, right? Jamel Charlo and Tony Harrison, that makes for a great, great fight. Harrison was giving him the business in that first fight. Charlo had some success. It was back and forth. Second fight, Harrison was pretty much outboxing him. Charlo showed that the work he put in the training camp with Derrick James, it, it all came to fruition and what he was able to do by hurting and stopping Harrison. It doesn't matter what Harrison said, he was hurt. But by him losing his dad, not sure how that's going to affect him going back into a fight with Charlo. I think it's going to be more extra motivation like going in with Zoo, and it could be extra motivation going in with Charlo. But he has to get through Zoo first because when it comes to his dad, man, you know, that, that was a significant loss, not only to his tight-knit family, but 
there were other fighters that his dad was able to, uh, to influence. Just as a father figure and a mentor, man. You know, and they have their boxing gym, the super bad boxing gym. And there's a lot of different kids that came through his dad's hands. And you, you got to think that Tony Harrison is going to be able to kind of harness all of that and keep going to carry that with him into this fight. Now, look, we talk about how important one man's life can be. Well, we're going to find out when Harrison lands there in Australia because we know that Costa Zoo, he was Australia's golden boy, kind of like what De La Hoya was here to the United States. And Harrison is going to be carrying his, his father's tattoo, which, which is father's face, which is tattooed on his chest. And he's going to have his father's name stitched on his trunks. And he's going to carry that over there, down under, and he's going to try to do what some people consider being the unthinkable, which is getting the, the job done kind of like what Devin Haney did. And not a lot of people are built like that to go out there to be at a disadvantage on someone's home turf, have everyone cheering against you to go out there and, and pull off the upset. So with me, when it comes to Harrison, when it comes to Zoo, the WBO showdown is, in my opinion, the biggest fight, and it's a huge risk to Costa Zoo and his undefeated career. And I'm giving Harrison a big chance. Matter of fact, I'm saying he's going to win. And I'll tell you what, you don't have to listen to me. I'm just a guy who's trying to get to 1,500 subscribers and hopefully 10,000 by the summer. But you look at Earl Spence. You'll listen to him, won't you? Earl Spence putting $10,000. And remember, Earl Spence and Jamel, they're stable mates, but they know boxing. They know Tony Harrison can fight. Man putting 10000 down for Tony Harrison to pull off the upset. Now, the betting odds haven't come out, but I would think that Tim Zhu would be the favorite. The favorite doesn't mean he's going to win. So, with that being said, man, when it comes to uh, Jamel Harrison, when it comes to what he's going to be able to do, you know what? I really think he's backed into a corner. He's going to show everyone that he shouldn't have counted him out. Same thing with Keith Thurman, Earl Spence. <laughs> I know somebody cussing at the screen right now. I ain't saying Thurman's going to win, but what I'm saying is, what you're seeing is great fights being made with guys who probably aren't really being given a chance because, uh, you know, of course, Keith Thurman has been, you know, way more inactive. But guys are getting an opportunity to breathe life back into their career to get them back to where they want to be. In the sport of boxing, all I'm saying is Tony Harris is probably going to seize this opportunity. Remember, man, um, a lot of things happen in, fight, in fights, man. Guys get ready for fights. Guys get injured, gets delayed. You know, Harrison and, and Charlo had the whole up and down fight being delayed and all that, man. Charlo hurting himself. Um, but it, we're talking about just huge opportunities here, man. Nobody's keen on just sitting back being idle. And a lot of times it's things beyond their control where they just can't get in there and, and, and get a good fight, much less a fight against a best contender. So it is what it is, man. But when we look at what's going on now, I think this is um, not for the first time in his life, man. I think it's, uh, uh, the Detroit native is going to come out, and he's going to be in tough. Um, and I think, that, I think they feel they're catching him on short notice, but my boy just posted a picture of him weighing in, like 165 pounds or something, seven weeks out. So he's been in the gym. You look, there's a lot of videos of him training people. So he lives in the gym, obviously. So it is what it is, man. But um, if he beats this Australia, that guarantees a win against Charlo. And I think we could see Charlo kind of like how Deontay Water right now, he's like he don't care about fighting no damn uh, uh, Tyson Fury. I could see Charlo saying he don't really want to fight him. But, you know, he'll have to. Kind of like, uh, what's his name, Earl Spence. Don't really want to fight Keith Thurman, but, you know, he'd be forced to. But it is what it is. I think, but I think Jamel would be more more open to it because he just Jamel just seems like he just doesn't give a damn. He'll fight anyone. But um, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. You know, uh, Jamel Charlo has the power. 
to change anything, which is what he did in the 11th round with that left hook against uh, super bad Tony Harrison. But I think Tony Harrison is going to be able to take a page out of Jamel Char- the Jamel Charlo notebook, and he's going to be able to do something in the ring that's going to change everything for him going forward, which will be him becoming a WBO champion and be back in the same uh, the, the same talks for a fight for with uh, Jamel Charlo and Tony Harrison three. But that being said, I think Harrison is going to rise again. Not sure what happens if he gets in there with Charlo. Charlo just seems to be on a whole other level right now. But when you when you're motivated, and when you're focused, you're dedicated, and when you have your father and you're carrying that man's legacy and everything he's done for you, he's done for people in the community, man, that can feel you to when you come out of that corner, you come out swinging and swinging with a vengeance. And it could get Tony Harrison back to being uh, not only a champion, but it could get him to become undisputed at 154 because him and Charlo make for a good fight. If Harrison might fight smart, fights disciplined, we know what he can do because he's done it twice against Jamel Charlo. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to all the, uh, shout out to all the, uh, <laughs> I'm tripping right now, right? Shout out to the veterans, all seven consonants. And as always, I am in the breeze. <laughs>